Welcome to session 11, where we're reading random AI. <laughs> Had to check what exactly I was, I was doing. So, yeah, sorry about, uh, sorry about being so late today and about missing the stream last time. Last time was technical issues with my network, which I had to work through. And I did figure it out. It was a driver issue. It took a lot longer than it should have to track that down. At least I think it's a driver issue. Anyway, so clearly my internet connection works fine now. Um, and then I was expecting to be able to make up a stream this weekend, and that didn't pan out either. So, yeah. And then today, just a series of bad, bad timings, bad events, bad luck, I guess. Anyway, today I got work, got off work, way later than usual. So, so I'm here late. But anyway, what we will be doing today is hopefully actually, actually getting to work on AI. So, <laughs> make sure everything still compiles and runs correctly, which I think it does because we haven't, haven't really been able to get too much of anything. So yeah, okay. We're still good, we'll still fly around, still bump into things. I think there's still a couple of bugs if, I go over here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So like, if I go over here, yeah, I can run into them, and they won't actually bump away until I like tap them. So anyway, the truffle where we left it. I haven't really had a chance to get any of the code, so nothing's changed so far. Which means that we can jump, try to jump <laughs> right into making AI. So first things first, um, if I can track down, here we go. Okay. So here's where we're making them, where we are making them. And what we want to do is essentially have, this is an initialization. Essentially what we want to have is a kind of, I guess, decision timer, essentially. So, uh, not update player necessarily, but we may have we may have a similar update for AI. I don't know yet, but possibly. So we will have what we want to do here is you can update and render as we're updating things. We do physics update on a separate timer. We want to update the AI. Do debug timer AI. And then see while game data accumulator. And essentially the reason that we want, we want to update the AI, but we don't necessarily want to update it every frame because one, if the AI takes a long time to do its calculations, so for complex pathfinding or, you know, a lot of number crunching through the data to figure out what different entities want to do, which by a lot of number crunching, I don't mean that one entity is going to take you know, several frames of calculation, although it could, but hopefully not. What I mean by a lot of number crunching is that <clears throat> entities will have a significant portion of the frame time taken up, possibly, by their calculations. So if they, you know, if they have to look through a lot of data to figure out which, what their actual decision is, then you may only be able to get, um, I don't know, say a dozen or, you know, tens of entities run through every every frame, which seems somewhat, it seems like a bad idea, 
because you know physics updates every frame possibly multiple times a frame and you know rendering is done every frame so why do you want why shouldn't ai be running as fast and the idea is essentially that one it kind of fakes human reaction time because if you have if you have a slower <clears throat> well say your game renders 60 frames a second and your ai updates at 20 frames a second or you know 10 frames a second or maybe even you know once depending on the kind of game you know possibly you may have one enormous ai system and it, it only updates every you know every second and a half actually so it's you know it takes a long time to do its its full calculations and its update but what you get out of that is it actually mimics to a degree human reaction time if you want that sort of thing so i do want that sort of thing for certain certain units and the idea is essentially that And the idea is essentially that, you know, if if we're playing a pilot and we're, you know, flying around in, in the mech and shooting at things or trying to find things, and we're fighting against other mechs and other pilots in the game, then it'll feel really cheap if the moment that we're in range and visible, they just start hitting us with no, you know, no a accuracy penalty, no... Nothing like that, just full on automated. I mean, it's. <laughs> it's the kind of weapon that you would want in a military, essentially. But it makes for a rather unfun game because you just immediately die. Which is not what we're going for. So we want to simulate, you know, we want to simulate other pilots, and pilots being human. Well, technically, the pilots in this game are not really human. But anyway, the point being. Or the point is that humans have reaction time. The pilots have a reaction time. So if you pop out of cover, take a few shots, and then jump back, and then fly off, you want to make sure that the AI responds accordingly, but not immediately. So maybe it takes them... You know, human reaction time, I think, is... You can get it down to the order of like 80 milliseconds or something like that. There's you have an internal an internal delay visually. You, you kind of in a sense you live in the past because your your eyes see something, transfer that data to your brain, and then your brain your brain takes that data and kind of smooshes it together with the past 80 second or 80 sorry 80 milliseconds worth of information that it's gotten from your eyes and then creates a coherent idea based on that so and you can you can kind of cut that down a little bit further but essentially within a roughly 80 millisecond window human perception the human brain perceives that as instantaneous. And there's there's been a couple of experiments and things like that with where like hearing a sound and hitting a light bulb or you know pressing a light bulb and or hitting hitting a button to turn a light bulb on and you know people telling the difference between the hearing the noise or hearing the sound and the light on the light bulb going on and then and then scientists messing around with like, okay, well, what if we put a delay on the light bulb? Or what if we make the light bulb come on? You know, what if we change the delay around and things like that? And you, they've done studies on, on stuff like that. And it turns out you can, by manipulating that sort of stuff, because there's a, a delay before the brain realizes that, oh, the, you know, the, the instant, you know, this instant in time, the, the synchronicity, I guess, of things has changed. There's a, a lag between the brain noticing that and then applying that. So you can get into some weird things where, like, 
you get used to you know you get used to a visual delay of about of around you know 70 to 80 milliseconds and then if that delay changes say you know whoever's if they're in the experiment if you're in an experiment like that if the you, know, you press a button and there was a delay say on the light bulb for it to come on or whatever you're doing and that delay goes away then you're in a situation where your brain believes that you know you perceive an 80 millisecond delay is instantaneous. So you press the button and 80 milliseconds later, 70, 80 milliseconds later, around that time, the light bulb comes on. Your brain perceives that and you believe that to be instantaneous. You hit the button and the light came on at the same time. Well, if, it, if that delay disappears, then you're in a situation where you can actually, your brain for a little while, you know, a couple of times essentially, will perceive you pressing the button and the light coming on as the light coming on before you actually press the button. Because it's expecting an 80 millisecond delay and it's not there. So all of a sudden, you hit the button, the light actually comes on as soon as there's electricity flowing to it, and your brain is now, it perceives that light coming on as, you know, it's, it's difficult to explain, I guess. But the idea is you can I'm way off, I'm way off topic. Point is, there's reaction time having having kind of a sliced up time step for the AI, having a slower update time step for the AI can be a good thing in the game because it allows it allows you to fake more human like reactions. So maybe the AI is doing the calculation instantaneous, but if you're only doing a calculation every 50 milliseconds or so for each entity, you know, if one entity, it, they do the update and then it takes them 50 milliseconds before they get to do another update, well, that 50 milliseconds is almost, I want to say around three frames, which People can register three frames. I mean, if you, especially if you're a fighting game, you know, if you're someone good at fighting games, then you can definitely tell the difference between three frames and two frames and four frames and whatnot. You know, you, it may not be conscious, but you can you you have a sense of this one's faster, this one's slower. You know, you you can tell those those time ranges, but. The you know the update for the for an individual unit in the game may only be a millisecond or less, even depending on depending on what it has to decide and what it's doing and whatnot. But since we're only updating it every fifty milliseconds, you know there's times where you can make an action. Maybe it updates right before you initiate an action. You zoom out of cover, shoot it a couple times, and then dash back into into cover. And it takes 50 milliseconds, because it just updated, before it gets to update again, and register, he's out of cover, I need to shoot at him. So within that time, you know, that's that's enough time to build up some momentum, and maybe by the time it starts shooting at you, it's you've managed to get in cover, or, you know, close enough. So you only get hit a couple of times instead of getting hit the instant you show up. So very long explanation for why this is why I'm doing this, I guess. Why I want there to be a delay on the AI update. So to get started, we will do I guess for now we'll just do update AI, really. I don't know what we will pass it yet. We're just going by what we have currently. We would do something like this, which not necessarily what we want, actually. Um, so game time step is 160th. Leave is what I set it to. Come up here. 
init data. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, time step is one over sixty. Um, I can just go down here and set up an AI update, an AI time step. For now, I suppose it could be a float. I feel like that would be a float. I have that set too. Okay, so it's a floating point number, right? Okay. So AI time step, we want that to be. Uh, 50 milliseconds, basically. I'm going to set it to 50, I suppose. The 160th is meant to be in. Technically, that's frames, isn't it? One six. No, that's one sixtieth of a second. Okay. So yeah. Right. So that should be around sixteen point six repeating milliseconds. The AI time step for now will just be fifty milliseconds. Do AI time step and then you can do an AI accumulator, which will just be name data accumulator. I guess that should work. So we just set it to, to whatever the game data accumulator is. So if it's accumulated, I don't know, 64 frames, or 64 milliseconds, I should say, of time, then that would be above, above the time step. So we update the AI, and then we Take away that extra time, which would drop that down to 14, and then we check it again, which would not work, so it would pass on. So we're kind of doing the same thing there that we're doing with the physics. Essentially, if for whatever reason we have a huge la spike lag, then the, the AI will update when it's supposed to. It'll, it'll retroactively update when it's supposed to. Although, I guess it doesn't really help anything per se because if nothing's changed when you do all of those update steps you don't you're just going to do a bunch of calculations to get the same decision a bunch of times so probably not what we want to do so maybe something like just if the accumulator is greater than the AI time step, go ahead and update it. That seems reasonable to me. Just update it once, and then once that's done... Yeah, but... Hmm. Mm hmm. So if we did it this way, you'd update once, then the physics system would essentially drain the accumulator. And, and then it wouldn't update again. I, mean, I don't know. That may not be a big issue, so I think for now I'm just going to leave it like it is. Now. Really, we don't want that quite yet, because we don't know what we're going to do there. So I think we'll go ahead and get rid of that as well. And what we want to do is kind of similar to what we're doing in the update player function here. Copy that. That from, okay. 
So we'll go up here, dump all of that. I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Move that over. So it is positioned correctly. And then what we're doing here is essentially want to run through want to run through each of the entities we're going to have to push everything push everything out one more time like so i want to do we want to do this or entity entity ID. Yes, that works. Game data entity. Num entities. There we go. I'm just going to go through all of the entities and what do we want to do with all of these entities? Essentially, like we're doing here, run through all of the entities, gather the pointers, do stuff with them. Yeah, okay. Checking up on some stuff. All right. So, game entity equals game data entity entity ID. There we go. And then These don't have a body anymore. They have physics IDs. <clears throat> so really, we're going to need need the physics body. I mean, I guess we do. All right, so game data, physics data, uh, T, no, bodies, entity physics ID. There we go. We do all that. Physics data does not have an overloaded number. Do it like that. All right. Set that to body. Player agent position. We don't have a player agent position. We have. Have something. Uh, okay. Really, we don't want to go through. Yeah, we don't want to go through entities here. We want to go through the agents. I think anyway. We gotta get through all of this and find out that none of this is what we want. All right. We want agent already has a pointer. Do all this. But we do want we do want to point it to the agent. Game data agents. There we go. Agent ID. Maybe like that. go. And most of this may just be getting rid of player 
arrow agent. Well, I say that some of this may be player is holding. Okay, so those are these are player controls. These are all going to disappear. Uh, nope, too far. Okay. We're going to need a bunch of other errors. Entity is an undeclared identifier. All right. So, was button pressed button right? I think that was getting ready for something else. But it's unimportant right now. So, we do not need to check any of this for the controllers. Because this is where our AI logic comes into play. It means actually... Actually... Okay, we're in the right spot. I think we're in the right spot. Be sure. <laughs> anyway. What we want to do here is instead of using a controller to select all of this, we want the AI system to do that. So we don't need to have camera zoom, I think. We may need some sort of some sort of limiting view limiter or whatnot. That way that way again, so it, it mimics the player's experience more. I think, anyway. I mean, we will, otherwise, because the AI is going to have to do things like just selecting an entity out of every available entity in the level. <laughs> or just everything, if we don't code it to, to narrow the scope a little bit, but we will. So, what we want to do is have... I don't know. I don't know what we want to put here, but add some kind of enemy view limiting or scope limiting. Maybe not scope. Add some kind of, say, selection limiting. To the AI. Sounds good to me. OK. So then we decide if button was pressed on the left controller. We don't want to do that. We want, I don't know, for right now we want, we can just put in something random for everyone. Say if one, zero out of 100. Yeah. I'll say if 100, 1 to 100, that is greater than 50, then we will attempt to warp to new area. Which this will not work because we are not close to anything. We'll need to add 
add code to move closer to a warp gate, warp node, warp marker, something like that. And then otherwise, Otherwise, we'll use the mining beam, and again, we're going to need to add code to move closer to that. To move closer to an asteroid. So, <clears throat> let's see, entity is an undeclared identifier. How often do we use entity? We seem to use it a lot. Entity area ID. We have the area ID in the agent? No. We have agent entity. So we can do that. Thanks. Agent entity, there we go. Body undeclared identifier. We can do agent body. And then. Okay, so we're back over to pressing these sorts of buttons, pressing buttons again. If bumper left is pressed, that is for finding, this is for scanning things. I believe. Go through, slip thing, holding. I say that. I think so. Point, point, finish points, okay. Left bumper. Left bumper is. I don't recall what left bumper is. The booster? No. The left trigger is the scanner. This is, oh, this is the grab. This is why you label things. All right, so if we go up to where the player is, what do we want to do here? We want to say, we need, we need to pull this out into a separate, separate function, essentially. Um, grab nearby asteroid, I guess, for now. Do we limit ourselves to asteroids? I don't think we do. Let's just say grab nearby entity. And then this goes to here. Uh -uh. So what I'm doing here, because we want to pull this out, is essentially the logic going on here is lift, pressed, then we have a B, which is currently player is holding. So essentially we have grab, oh, this is, this is what I'm adding. So, A and not B does stuff, essentially, does the stuff. And then not A and B resets everything. So, and we need, we need both of these because it's possible for 
They both control one of the variables. I'm sorry, I'm so tired. It's a long day. So for instance, in this situation, it is possible that B is set to true and B is set to not true here. Which essentially what all of this is boiling down to is a state machine, but I don't want to I don't want to build the mechanics of a state machine quite yet. If I can just use a simple one, I would prefer that one. What we want here If we hold the button, or if we're pressing the button, and we are also holding on to something, then we don't need to do any of this. Because we've, we've already set it up, we can leave it alone. If... Well, I guess really the thing to do at this, at this point is to go ahead and fill out the other versions of oh, essentially the other versions of the state machine. So like this. So if both of those are set, then do nothing. If both of them are not set, then do nothing. So we only want to do things in the case they are exclusively or or together, and we want to do something different depending on which one is set. So is there anything that we can simplify? <laughs> um, I don't think so. Because yes, we don't the problem is that we don't want to do anything in the case that one of these is not set. And there's nothing in the general case that allows us to do those. So... Perhaps what we can do... As we can say, well, we can test for the two versions that we want, A and not B, or not A and B. And if that's the case, that would simplify these. All of that stuff would simplify down to C goes to grab stuff or resets, depending on something else. And then not C goes to nothing, which is fine. We just need to make sure that we can still do what we want here. <clears throat> I mean, I guess, or the other option is. All right, instead of going down that rabbit hole, basically what we have is either they want to hold something and they are holding it. They want to hold something and they are not holding it. So we have this one. They want to hold something and they're already holding it. You don't need to do anything. They want to hold something and they're not holding anything. 
then we need to see if we can hold something. And if so, we'll change state accordingly. We don't want to hold anything, but we are, in which case we should let go. Or we don't want to hold anything and we're not, in which case, again, we don't need to do anything. So really, we should just be able to send all of that information right here. Player is holding. And there we go. And then and then all of <laughs> pretty much all of this goes away. Just gets sucked right up into that function. Grab nearby entity. Go ahead and toss all of that in there. And then we can do wants to say wants to grab and is grabbing. Okay, we don't need two of these. Wants to grab, and then here we can do this sort of thing. Whoop. Eh. All right. And then we need to set this information. What we can actually do is just put Turn and this sets. See that would set is grabbing the true player is holding. Yeah. Okay. So probably we want to call this something like is grabbing nearby entity. And then yeah, if you if you want to grab and you are grabbing or not grabbing something, then do whatever you need to, otherwise stuff happens. Alright. And then, yeah, we're going to pass all of that in. Before we get to that real quick, make sure that we call this correctly. So really what we want to do here, player is holding equals the result of is grabbing nearby entity. There we go. Bam. And file that a couple times for no reason other than to Flush out all the errors, I guess. Anyway, we need to pass in game data like so. We don't have a player. We need the game data to cycle through all of the entities. All right. Um, you only want to cycle through the entities if, if, you only want to cycle through the entities <laughs> if we want to grab something and we're not grabbing, like I've been talking about. All right, so... What's going on here? We need player data, which is just the agent, essentially. So that would be player agent, 
for just agent. Go through, set all of these. I don't know if player has a grab edge or hold edge set. They may have to do something about that. Um, center is an undeclared identifier. How? Where do I get center from? Player body mesh point. Okay. I can just. I should just be able to calculate that in here. Physics point. There we go. Center equals game. We're going to do that. We can just do body point. Body mesh point zero. There we go. Hold edge is not a member of game agents. You can make it one. Just toss that over there. So we do that. Then really we don't need is grabbing anymore. We can just do that. Same for all of this stuff. Agent is holding equals whatever. Is holding equals false. There we go. All that stuff checks out. And then, so just to be sure, the only reason that we need game data. Okay, now, so we do need. We need physics. Data, the physics data bodies, or just for their center point. I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. Allergies. <sighs> Allergies are no fun. All right. So we need. Really, we need entity information. So wait a minute. If we pull out the entities. We need... Okay, so we need physics information. We have to get the center point for the, for the entity. And then... Area ID. Entity pointer, entity size. Okay, so we need a couple of those things. All right. Well, I guess what we can do is just leave that for now. This has become a number of agent structs. Here, player return anything. No, it says it does, but it doesn't. And then we need game data. Player agent. Is holding function does not take three arguments. Yeah, we actually need the agent pointer. Well, if we need the agent pointer, then we don't need we don't need that. Here, which is the AI part, 
the AI version, and we're doing the same thing. Whatever that was about. He is grabbing your entity. We pass in the game data. We pass in the agent data, and then we pass in whether we want to hold it or not. And that we don't know. So... I'm going to say false for now. Like so. Using afterburner. Depends on whether the controller is pressed. So that needs to get removed. Controller button stick left is pressed. And that'll just be... Hmm. I feel like we'll set that to false as well for now. Okay. We have that. And then this is... This is just rendering. No, this is physics update stuff. Okay. Is it setting acceleration to? Oh no, this is this is directional stuff. I think. Okay, so yeah, it is directional stuff. It's the velocity or the the booster code basically, which I guess should also technically be moved. So, for instance, all of this is being set in here while dealing with the controllers. What we want to do here is push shape. What shape are we pushing? Layer body mesh points. Is there a reason we are... Oh, I see. This is just so we can tell how many resources we've collected. Ah, okay. So, that's fine. Center, acceleration, this is setting our direction based on where we're going and what our and what our whether we're using the afterburner or not setting our direction based on which direction we're pushing on the controller and whether or not we're holding the afterburner button down although technically they're not afterburners because that's a kind of jet they're whether we're using our boosters. We should just call all of this boosters. That's, that sounds much easier. I'm doing all of this. There we go. Using booster. All set. So, body undeclared identifier. That's fine. We can set that like so. Entity agent has a pointer to an entity. Again, entity entity undeclared identifier. Oh, I see. And then really, this should be agent, I think. And then it's going to get mad at us because calc player heat color does not actually calculate the player's heat color. It calculates 
the agent's heat color. And currently the player is the one with a boost timer. Move that over. And the player data player data is getting pretty sparse. Hmm. Alright. Calculate uh, don't need that. You can change all of those. And then change those. And then change all of these. And, and eventually we will have converted all of these. There we go. We calculate agent heat color now. This is an update player. Okay. So. There's no such thing as player heat color. At least not anymore. There we go. Again, we don't have player heat color, we have agent heat color. That works fine. Agent body. And there we go. Now, if I run this, unfortunately, it's not going to do anything. I mean, it technically it will try to do something, but it will it will fail because we don't have code to actually move them around, move any of the agents around. So essentially, what's going to happen is they're they're going to flip back and forth between trying to warp to a new area and using the, their mining beam. And neither of them will work because they're not. Well, no, I take that back. It might work with them trying to do that because the they may be close enough to something for one of those to actually activate. However. However, there is a problem here. We are still doing all of this based on a controller, which we don't want. So we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. And then here, because we've gotten rid of the controller, we should get a couple more errors. Yeah, here we go. So here we need to figure out where we want to go, essentially. But we can't do that until we know what we want to do. So what we may do is random choice is have 100 plus 1 currently. And then we'll say cut that guy real quick. We can put him above here for, for now. And selection limiting to the AI. So we need to do that. And what we're going to do here, instead of doing all of that, is say, okay. So you have a random choice, and it's above. What do I want to say? 60? 70? We'll do 70. If it's above 70, we want to do this one. If random choice is above 40, then do that one. 
if it's above 10, then we'll do whatever that turns out to be. Otherwise, we'll do the last one. So we'll see if we can grab something there. And then last we, lastly, we will attempt to use the booster. Think. Using booster equals false. Oh, I see. Okay. Really, all of this is part of the using of using the booster. And I'm pretty sure we don't need this stuff anymore. So that that's not the booster. This stuff is part of I mean really it's just part of accelerating, to be honest. It's just if you also happen to be using the booster, then do that. Is this. <laughs> that's that's all it is really. Alright. So what do we want to do here? I think We need to set the acceleration to something. What we do down here. And it's, that's based on whether or not we're using, decided to use. So really we can set whether we want to use the booster right there. That's still fine. So, I want to change this a bit. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think it matters so much at the moment because none of these things will work. I think what I may actually do is just get rid of all of them and have some basic printing to figure out what's going on. Or, no, we'll do color coding because that tends to work better. So, if we are attempting to go to warp marker, we are going to set our color to to a purple, I think. R G B. Go. Yeah. If we're attempting to use our mining beam, we'll go with a yellow because that's the color of the mine. If we are trying to grab something, then we will set that to green, maybe? Maybe just a gray. And then if we're using the booster, we will set it to red, I guess. Sounds good to me. And none of that other stuff is going to be run, which is fine. That should not be run because we don't want to set the camera position to everything in the game. Um, controller does not exist. That's, that's true. We need some sort of <laughs> some sort of driving behavior to control where we want to go. Don't know how we're going to do that yet. So for now, we will just set the director, director direction to be zero. And we'll just make sure things work out like we were thinking they would. So nothing's happening. <laughs> All right. 
none of these are being hit. Oh, you know what? I bet it's because this this is never being entered because the accumulator never makes it to this point. Really? Yeah. I think really what we're going to have to do is have a separate accumulator. What we're going to do here is say this uses the AI accumulator. And then we'll go over here and say, all right, we have our AI accumulator and our physics accumulator. And then we'll go ahead and set them accordingly right there. And honestly, I think most of this should be, this sort of stuff would be moved into the individual systems that deal with this. Probably what will happen eventually. Yeah, so like that part of the code right there, where I'm checking the time step versus the accumulator, that, will, that would actually be in the physics code. So maybe make a note of that. Time step and update code into, into the physics system. System. There we go. All right. And what we're doing, what we're doing over here is, I think we're just going to set the AI accumulator to zero every time that it attempts to update for the moment. And we may have we have a we may have a more detailed system later on, but for right now that should be fine. So hopefully AI is getting run, but they're not doing anything. Alright, so why aren't they doing anything? We go over here. This is taking time, so we get, it looks like, radiate. yeah, so it looks like it's doing calculations for every agent in the game. Their center point, set the agent position to that center point, set using Boosters to false, set the direction at zero, make a random decision. And this should be zero to 99, plus a one would bump it up from to one to 100. So if it's above 70, do that. If it's above 40, do that. If it's above 10, do that. And otherwise, red. And then, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and then it calculates the agent heat color and completely overrides anything that we've set. So really, that should probably be in booster code somehow, somewhere. Need speed limit and thrust.
thrust is just set to the agent thrust. Okay. So I'm thinking what we can do is we can take all of this and move that in here. And then it's going to complain about some things not existing yet. Thrust and speed limit don't exist. So we can take those and move them up here. And it just works. I think anyway. So speed limit is set to 10, thrust is set to agent thrust. That's both fine. We get down. Here, if it's using booster, then set the color appropriately. Ah, and we don't need to care about that for the time being. There we go. Really, I only need to worry about this if they're using the booster. Your boost time limit is five. That's set just to have something there. It's just not a, a number floating around. And I like these, which maybe is what I should have done, but this is getting lost eventually anyway. Showing resource collection. Resources collected. That'll work. All right. Now do we have? We should have color changing guys. Still now. Well. All right. I guess at this point, I'm just gonna have to go in. Probably gonna be something really dumb. Is how it usually works. But anyway, so we'll jump into here. No, jump into there. And then we need to go Windows. No, PC bars all dot x64. Dev in cross the stars. All right. Cool. Up in here and figure out what it's actually doing. Clearly, it's not what I am expecting it to. Those are all fine, probably. Didn't render, here we go. AI time step, AI accumulator, and you. All right, well, one real quick and easy thing to do here is do that. The AI accumulator is never more than the AI time step. That doesn't make any sense. AI time step is 50, AI accumulator should just be increasing. Or is this, this is in seconds. Well, there you go. I don't want it to update the AI every 50 seconds. I want it to update the AI every 50 milliseconds, which would be... Um, let's see. 50 divided by... What am I... How am I doing that in here? Uh, there we go. 
AI accumulator, AI time step. No. No, no. We want to do that in the floating point. There we go. Now we can hop over to our development environment. Yes, one should load. Now it should work. There we go. So it stopped at the right spot. Okay. And I think. I think if we, if we just skip that. Yep, there you go. All flipping out, including me, even though I shouldn't be. I guess technically, since I have the player has an agent or has agent data. Hmm. You need to change that. All right. Good. That's what we wanted to happen. Even though it looks kind of psychedelic, but that's fine. All we need to know is that it's it's actually making a decision here, which is good. So, what we want to do next is, I think I want to make sure that it doesn't try rendering, or doesn't try making a decision for the player. We don't want the player running around. I want, I want the player to decide what the player does, not the AI. So, something in my eye is bugging the crap out of me. So, we need we either need to check the player's agent data and not do any of that, or the player data structure itself needs to mimic that of the agent, which may be the case. Or the other option is to pull this apart even further and you wouldn't have agent data, you would have, I don't even know what you'd call it, mech data. And I guess, and it would just be All of this sort of stuff. I feel like the mech should not hold all of this information. The mech should have, like, that information. And then the agent has. mech data and the player has mech data so and then what we do is just We would need an array. We need an array of max. Like so. Number of max. to re redo all of this. All right. Player does not actually have an agent. Player has mech data. We do not set that to an agent. We set that to a mech. 
which really we want something like this where we initialize a mech and we do all the same stuff that we were doing earlier if game data number of mechs is less than max number of mechs then we get some mech data from the array like so what do we set it to Hmm. Some of these things are set to zero. Not everything, though. There we go. And then those should be set to zero. And, I mean, honestly, we should be able to do just something like that so that clear everything and then I guess we could pass in the rest of it player entity so if all of this works then we're going to return game data number of mechs and increment it otherwise just return negative one that's been our default error value for now so Those game data is undeclared. We can do that. All right, mech undeclared identifier. This is true. We need to initialize the mech. What are we going to do here? If We don't actually have any game data to initialize that with. Well, you could just pass it in, I suppose. Mech ID. A player storing a mech pointer, not a mech ID. So we want to do it that way. I don't know if we want to do it that way. Oh, all of this stuff is going to need a massive redesign at some point. Do that. Initialize all of that. All of those things should all be set to zero anyway. I guess it will be cleared out. There we go. Initialize player data. We do not send in agents. We send in mix. Like so. Over here. We are not calculating agent heat color anymore. We're calculating mech heat color, which 
makes sense because technically it's the mechs that are overheating. Alright. Everywhere we have an agent, we can get rid of all of that. Okay. Likewise. This is a little bit of an issue. So really what we want here is we're going to need the current area ID. Which goes right there. Agent is undeclared, and we only need the agent to have the center point of the body. So let's do that. Of course, it's still gonna it's still gonna complain because we haven't actually changed the uh, the error. We can get rid of all of that with just center. Agent jump enable distance that is a mech thing now. Agent position that's just the center. Should just be the center. Um, Oh right, we have to be able to actually change change the current area ID. So maybe we will return that one. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, I feel like I'm just set area ID to to that. I don't think that's gonna work. Nope. It goes on this side. There you go. And then what we would like to do what I want to do over here. Maybe? Maybe not. Somewhere over here. Here we go. And that's probably gonna throw a fit because, yeah, okay. World area ID, there we go. The reason we wanna do it that way is so now, I just have a better idea of what we're passing back. Likewise, we can set that to what we're passing in. <laughs> but agent still doesn't have it. All right. So what we want to do here, we need to get rid of all of these so we can actually tell what's going on. We set the new area. And we go through and set all the points. Okay. Which means we can actually just return that and we should be fine. Okay. Otherwise return negative one because we didn't find anything. 
All right, now it's going to complain about agent, there we go, not having a body to do anything with. So, we need to reset all of the points when we warp to a new area. And to do that, we need the mesh. So we go physics, mesh, mesh. Now we're going to need, <laughs> we'll need the number of points too. Oh, no. Because that's in the mesh. Like so. There we go. Mesh is not a member of physics. Although collision mesh. There we go. Collection rate is not a member of game agent. It's a member of mech. Is undeclared in this area. We're passing in the agent. All right. Once again. Current. Current. Area ID. There we go. I actually typed it all out. Agent is an undeclared identifier. Again, we need we need the center point, not the whole thing. Just get rid of that entirely. They're just passing it in. Agent body. Oh, that's for the physics system. Okay. Hmm. We're going to need to pass in the physics body. Where do we use the mech? Way down there. Okay. Do that. Yeah. There we go. Agent entity resources. Uh, uh. Okay. If we find something with resources, we break out of this loop. It's fine. We need access to the entity. So we have we have an entity somewhere. Here we go. But that's coming from body one. But B one Is not our body, it's the enemy's body. Or the object's body, I should say. All right. What to do here?
to allergies, mosquitoes, or something that I would like to get rid of from this world. Anyway. Physics body. Enemy body. No. They're mining. We're not. The resource body? Body with resources? I don't know. Other body. <laughs> <coughs> we'll go with the dumbest name possible. But it works. Alright. And then we have the entity here, which is the other entity. Yep, I'm encoding my own engine. Microbic music. What does microbic music sound like? Uh... I am, sort of, I'm, um, I don't actually have it pulled up, here. Um, there we go. <laughs> I can tell that I'm tired because I don't remember the hotkey, which should be muscle memory. Anyway, so yeah, my, the actual SDL code that I'm using currently is this to process events, which is trivial to move over to just using straight Windows code, really. And then all of this, which really just consists of SDL init here, getting a, a controller pointer from SDL so I can pass it into the functions that I need to, and then quit. And then all the stuff that's in render, and all the stuff that's in render for the rendering system has been mostly moved over to OpenGL now, so I'm actually only using SDL to get a render context. So, yeah, not there's not actually a whole lot of SDL left in here, and I probably will go ahead and clean it out at some point in the future. I'd, there's too many other things for me to to try and get done before I start really worrying about that. But yeah, it's it's my own engine, if you can call it that. I haven't <laughs> I haven't finished building it yet, so it's my own collection of pieces of an engine at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, so Part of the reason that I'm trying to go through AI at the moment is so I'll actually have something resembling a game to use as a as a reference point for what needs to be in the engine. And there's a lot of stuff that's already popped up, so like a lot of kind of a little bit of the we're doing a type def on area IDs, even though they're just numbers and things like that. Just some basic stuff, cleaning house, moving some information around. A lot of that is um, it wouldn't be there, or I wouldn't know about it if I hadn't have built everything from scratch, really. So the the idea is to, to build each as I'm trying to build the game, I'll build whatever part of the engine or piece of the engine I need to do that, even if it's crap and it's not integrated well with the rest of the engine at all. I keep saying the engine. I don't have an engine yet. <laughs> it's just a bunch of code that kind of does random, the random bits and pieces of things that I need it to do. So, which is kind of what happens when you're building your first game anyway, which this is, this is my first major game. But the point is that since I'm building it kind of piecemeal, I, there's not really a cohesive whole at the moment, and that's okay, because a lot of this stuff I'm not... Since I'm trying to build the game, I'm not interested in making the engine 
fast or efficient or well architected or any of that sort of stuff because I want to game first, really. And if the game doesn't... Like, if it turns out that I can render everything in the entire game that I need to render on screen, every frame, with no slowdown that the player can perceive, then I don't need to do any rendering op optimization. If that's the case, then I just won't do rendering optimization. But if it turns out that that is an issue, then I'll go ahead and do that and polish up that section. So that's, that's kind of how I'm going about it, because I don't want to sit there and try and build the perfect 2D rendering engine when I don't, I don't know if I need it. So. Yeah, basically. Everything, everything is spaghetti code until, until I realize that it needs to not be, essentially. So the reason that I'm placing so much focus on building the game is because you're only going to know what your game engine needs if you have a game to use it with. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm doing. That way, you know, like I said, I don't spend a lot of time trying to build up some perfect system for, that I end up not needing. You know, I could, I could sit there and build the pers perfect physics system, and it turns out that I don't, I don't need to know any of the information that a you know, fully optimized physics system would give me. Which is not true. I do know some of the things that I'm actually going to need in my physics system that's not done yet, but that's later. <laughs> I'm not working on that right now. So, back to what I was doing, which is resource offsets. And what I need to do here is... Did I already set... Yeah, pass in the game entity. Okay. So really what I'm just going to do here is... that. Cool. Okay. There we go. This is grabbing nearby entity. This should be checking with... A mech, I think. And then all of this stuff is going to go haywire because what are you doing? Also, it comes to my attention that I don't need to pass in the center point in all of these things because that should be updated already in the mech information. That's the mech position, like so. Although, go. Okay. Cool. I don't need a pointer to the center. That's not big enough to care about. Mech position. Why am I? Why am I even doing that? I need that. Agent. Nope. Mech is holding. Agent entity area ID. I can just pass in the area ID. Over here. Area ID current, area ID. Nope. <laughs> That's all I needed. And, okay. Alright, so I'm going to need to pass in the entity after all. Um. Once again, probably want to rename all of these things. Um, nope, that's too far away. Other entity. There you go. 
center. Center position. Nope. Neck position. Agent entity size. Just need entity size. That is mech is holding. Uh, right, okay, so all of that is just going to change to mech. There we go. Center and declared identifier. Mech position. Pointer to mech position. Cannot convert from vector to. Oh. Well? Huh. So that needs to be a physics. Uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. The holding edges are all physics points. All right, so that would be. Entity. He has a physics ID though. Well, blah. I guess I'll just have to pass that in then. Um. Center point position and that needs to be an address. There we go. Victor, oh. Okay, that's that's what I needed. Agent is not a member of player. That's correct. Agent is not a member of player. Agent is not a member of player. Warp to new area function does not take three arguments. That is that's true. Is not. What to new area? All right. So I need world data, area data, I need the player's current ID, the current area ID, which should be. Mech entity area ID. We have the mech info and then the collision mesh. Um, Player body mesh. Can I convert argument five from collision mesh to collision mesh pointer? Okay. Use mining beam. I get to do the next one. Game data, oh boy. I get the feeling that I'm going to be passing a lot of same information over and over. Area ID. <coughs> All right, I'm going to do play body. And then play mech. And then player entity. And then the controller direction. Uh, 
All right. And then it is grabbing nearby entity. Like I was saying, at some point, a lot of this stuff will be reorganized. Entity area ID. Technically, I don't need the area ID for any of these because I'm already passing in the entity. Right? All right, well, I'm not there, so that one's fine. This one I'm passing in the entity ID, so I don't need that. Good that way. Do. There we go. Is grabbing nearby entity. Don't need that. Center point. So that would be player body mesh point zero. There we go. Although, I think I already pull out. Yeah, I already pull out the center position, so really I can just pass in that. Okay. Current area ID. There you go. Agent is not a member of player data. Mm -hmm. There's all mech information. Position is not a member of agent. The All right. And direction. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for not being as quite as active and lively as usual. I am... I'm not feeling my greatest at the moment. Okay. Having done all of that, hopefully... <laughs> hopefully that won't happen. As I say, hopefully the player character will not be flashing crazy colors. But oh well. We jump right into it. Agent Mech was a null pointer. Which makes sense, because I don't think we set that when we were initializing everything. So, up here, we initialize a lot of things, but we don't initialize the mech data. So 
so we should be able to just do that. There we go. Aha! Everybody else is going crazy, but we are not, and that's that's exactly what we want at the moment. Everyone else is being controlled by an AI decision maker, an AI, AI controller, and we get to make our own decisions and fly around. Now, granted, they're not doing anything at the moment, and that's because we just have the... Um, we essentially just have this if statement in place of in in lieu of actual decision making but that's just to make sure that everything's pulled apart correctly no correctly is as far as we know currently so what we will need to do and considering how late it is i think it's about time to end the stream i think what we will do next time is begin adding some some kind of steering behavior, maybe not the traditional steering behaviors, but some way for entities to move around on their own. And again, we'll probably start from a random base, so it'll just be picking entities out of <laughs> out of what's available and then just moving to them for a while until it picks another random one. But the point is to get the behaviors up and running and working, so eventually we'll have the pieces to build something bigger and more complicated. Or preferably more complex, not necessarily more complicated. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for tonight. I try to stream every Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. This past weekend has not been... <laughs> has not quite been as on schedule as I would like, but hopefully I can I can fix that. So hope you found everything interesting and see you guys later. Bye bye.